In this video, we'll take a look at the sheet metal workbench fold-to-wall tool and how the position parameter in fold properties affects the bend. This can be set to forward, middle, or backward, and each setting affects the bend in unique ways. Links in the description will get you to a PDF drawing, spreadsheets, and the free CAD model. Let's get started. Scotty recording here. Today we're going to take a look at the fold-to-wall tool in free CAD in particular the parameter that controls the position of the bend line. But before we get into that, let me provide some background on FreeCAD and a few things that you're going to want to know. I'm on Real Thunder and the dope on that is right here. There's a link in the description so you can get this. It's an app image that I'm running. It runs pretty well. So this is what is going on on my PC. So you get the right version loaded, and the next thing you need to deal with is to make sure that you have your sheet metal workbench installed. That's important, and that can be taken care of in your add-on manager. Go down here, and you'll notice my sheet metal workbench says installed, and that's because it's installed. In your situation, it may not be, so you click on this and install it. You may see some errors come up in the window down here regarding uh, HTTP, things it can't find, yada yada. It's an old, um, old add-on, so there's a few little glitches, but the bottom line is it installs properly and it runs well, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So once you get that installed, the next thing that you want to take care of is into preferences and into the sheet metal workbench, and make sure that engineering UX mode is enabled. You want to make sure to do that. That will be required if you're going to work this model up from scratch and you're going to use the unfold tool. My model, which I'll load now, there's a link in the description to it. It'll save you a little time. There it is. It's a pretty simple part. It's just a right angle L that's symmetric, made from aluminum. 5052 063 thick with a 16th inch bend radius here. It's a very simple part. I did do a drawing of this part, which looks like this, and that is also linked in the description if you want to get a hold of this PDF and print it out. This is a pretty common part that I've used in a lot of my videos and examples. This particular PDF just has some metric dimensions in here for convenience so you know what's going on in millimeters. So that's available. You can download that, print it out so you can have it if you need it. It'll, it'll help a little bit. So this video we're going to look at the fold to wall tool and in particular the position parameter that controls where the bend line is. So let's go into the model tree right here. We'll see what's going on with this part. The first thing I did was I did a sketch, which looks like this. And this is basically your blank sheet metal piece that you're going to bend. I just picked 50.8, which is 2 inches. It's not that important, but it's an easy number. So this is 2 inches wide. And then it's 98.76 in length is how we need to blank this out in order to get this to give us 2 inch um, by 2 inch flanges or 50.8 millimeter flanges. Come back to the drawing and we can go down here a little bit and here's a flat layout and you'll see here 98.76 and you'll see some other information here that is helpful. So that's where that all came from. So you create your sketch and the next thing that has to be done is if you're going to use the fold to wall tool it requires a separate sketch that provides the position of a bend line. So I did that here and that looks like this. It's a separate sketch and here's my bend line. I just made it a little wider than the actual width of the part. The interesting thing with the fold-to-wall tool and the bend line is that if you're making an oblique 
bend here like a tab that's going to come out of the middle of a piece of sheet metal. This bend line can be shorter than the width of the blank piece. Now you can create a lot of interesting bends and a lot of funky angles and things like that in this free CAD modeling program. But be aware that somebody's got to make this part and the fabricator may re be required to tool up with special dies and special uh, press break setups and things like that and, and you can create a part very easily in FreeCAD that's actually very difficult to fabricate so when you're creating these parts just be sensitive to what the fabricator has to do to actually physically make these parts. So this video is going to look at just the position of this bend line and there are three options which would be forward middle and backward so we're going to take a look at that and see how that actually affects the part so we'll close this down quick tip here on locating the position of your bend line which is this line right here this is actually considered external geometry this is the sketch that was used to create the blank sheet metal part there's a tool up here called external geometry so what you can do is you can select that tool and you can create a line or a reference down here which is shown here in red which allows you to create a dimension from which is what I did to dimension from the end of the part to the bend line. The other thing that I did was use a formula which simply is the length of the blanked out piece divided by two, which puts that bend line exactly in the middle of the part. So this is parametric, so should you go back and you make this blank piece a little bit longer, then this will always wind up keeping this bend line in the center of the part. So quick tip, uh, hopefully that will, will help you if you're gonna create this model from scratch. So we'll close this down and come back to the sheet metal workbench. So if you're making this from scratch, you've got your sketch padded blank piece of metal. This will be flat. Then you've got your bend line. A couple things that you'll want to be careful about. The bend line needs to sit on top, in other words, this face here of the metal. And if you don't do that, you're going to get an index out of range error. So in my model here, you'll notice that this line has got a translation on Z of minus 1.6, which just happens to be the thickness of the metal, which sets this bend line right on the top face here. So you'll go in, you'll select the top face, you'll do a control click and select this line, and then you'll do a fold a wall, and then when that's done, the part will look like this. So that's how that should come out. So just a heads up on position this bend line and the sequence in which you select your material and actually the bend line, it does matter. So let's go back into the part design workbench, go into the model tree, take a look at fold. And the parameters that I spoke about are position and you'll see that there are three of them, forward, middle, and backward. So let's take a look at the middle one first, which is how we have this set. We can go ahead and take a look at this view here, side view, bring this in a little bit, and we'll turn on that bend line. So you'll see the bend line, the end point is that little green square there is right in the middle. So this bend line by virtue of the position parameter that I spoke about before, forward, middle, and backward is going to move from here to the center, which is middle, all the way over here, which is backward. It is going to move no more than the distance of the bend allowance, which is equal to the arc length of the neutral axis, which is not readily discernible in FreeCAD. So this spreadsheet helps with that. It does the calculations 
for bend allowance in terms of a K factor, material thickness, and bend radius. Again, link in the description. You can get a hold of the spreadsheet in either Libre Calc or Excel. This row here is the formula here solved for K factor. And if you know the bend allowance, material thickness, and bend radius, it'll spit out the K factor. So you can get both of these numbers in the spreadsheet if you need it. But here's what's important. This 3.517, which we can round up to 3.52, that's the bend allowance or the arc length of the neutral axis circle, actually one quarter of that since it's a 90 degree bend. And here's a note, just for perspective, 0.01 millimeters is actually four ten thousandths or four tenths of an inch. It's a very tiny amount. So there's some round off error that's occurring in here that's a function of the floating point math in the spreadsheet and also in Libre Calc. And you're seeing some discrepancies here. 5.17 um, as opposed to 5.18 or 5.19 or 5.16 or 5.1, 5.2. There's such small amounts, you can just round up to two decimal places. We'll make this 3.52, call it a day. This is such a tiny amount, I don't know of any bend operation or any equipment that is capable of bending with this type of accuracy. So just be aware that that's what's going on when you see discrepancies, that's, that's what's behind it. So the bend allowance is important, 3.52, just remember that number. So we'll come back here and let's take some measurements and play around with this position a little bit and see if we can get some things to correlate and explain how things are going to work out here. So let's make this a little bit smaller. So we'll go to the linear measurement tool. We'll pick up this point and we'll pick up this point out here and we'll go into wireframe so we can see that. So the outside dimension is 50.82. We'll ignore the 0.02 per previous explanation. It's such a tiny amount. You don't have to worry about it. So it's two inches on the outside, which is what we expected. So let's go ahead and clear these dimensions and let's pick up the other flange here. And as expected, it's also 50.82 or 50.8. It's two inches. It's a symmetric part. We asked for this bend line to be in the middle. So when it bent, it bent evenly on both sides, creating a symmetric part. So let's go back into fold and let's modify this position and let's pick forward. We'll recompute the part. You see that jump there that changed a little bit. Let's turn on the bend line and you'll see now that that bend line moved to the left and it actually moved to the left by a distance of half the bend allowance. And this point here or this bend line will move no more than the total bend allowance. So if you pick middle, it'll move half the bend allowance to the right and if you pick backward, it'll move half the bend allowance to the right again, and that point will be out over here. So that's kind of the range at which that point will move, and it changes where the bend line is, and that's where the bend sweep transitions from, from a sweep to straight metal. So let's take some measurements and see what we get. So we'll go back to the linear measuring tool and we'll pick this up, this point, and we'll pick this point here. So we can see that this increased, which was as expected. So just remember that 52.58 and since the blank length of this piece was not changed, if this increased, this had to decrease. So let's take a look at that. We'll go ahead and pick up this point here, and pick up this point here. As expected, this decreased 49.06. If you take the difference between 
52.58 down here and 49.06, you'll get 3.52, which, not surprising, is our bend allowance 3.52. So that's where that came from. So that's how that works. So let's go ahead and clear these dimensions out. And what we'll do here is go ahead and let me go into tasks here. And clear these dimensions. There we go. OK. So I'll go back into fold, and we will go into position, and we will pick backward. Let's see what that does. Let's recompute the model. And we'll turn on the bend line. And as expected, this point moved all the way over here to the right, and it moved a distance equal to the arc length of the neutral axis, which would be the bend allowance, which would be 3.52. So we'll go ahead and take some measurements, and I think we kind of know what's going to be coming out here. This one's going to be 49.06, which is what it used to be up here. It shifted. So we'll clear that out. And this one here is going to be 52.58, which is expected. They just flip flopped. And again, the difference between these two is simply the bend allowance, which is 3.52. So that's how that works. Another dimension that's in here that's interesting is your 3.20, and that's your setback, and that's the bend line down to the outside surface of your part. And all that is is the bend radius, which is 1.6 millimeters, plus the material thickness, which is 1.6 millimeters, or 3.2 millimeters. So that's where that number came from. So that's how the position parameter, let's go back and let me clear these dimensions here and then close this. That's how this position parameter right here functions. We'll put it back to middle, recompute the part. And it simply changes the bend reference and will cause metal to be added on one side of the bend and subtracted from the other side of the bend. And the important thing to remember is if this part were laying flat down and this bend line were down here and it was vertical, you would see this bend line moving from forward, half your bend allowance to middle, and then half again to the right, your bend allowance, and it would be sitting right, right there if this was laid out flat. So that's how that works. So that's it. Hopefully that clears up some confusion about this fold and what this position parameter does, forward, middle, and backward. It was confusing for me when I first saw it. It's not terribly well explained in the documentation, but Hopefully this video clears up any confusion and you can use it to figure out your dimensions on what's on the other side of your bend line, either hither or yonder. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful and informative. Thanks for watching.